Oh, good morning, Toby. Such a good boy, Toby. It is a beautiful day, but gloomy and cloudy for like the last week and a half. Had a little bit of sun here and there, but not too much. And it's nice to see some blue in the skies. While it lasts, I only have two days in the forecast this week without rain. So, got a bunch to do. Had a bunch to do anyways. Where you going, bud? Oh, I know where he's going. Let him have his privacy. Been getting plenty of rain, finally, which is great. Things are starting to fill back out and get nice and lush again. At one point, a few weeks ago, I was watering nearly three times a day. And that tripod sprinkler that I got down there was coming in so handy while I was doing that, but I really haven't had to use it since. I, I don't even know when. I actually, I haven't watered plants in quite a while, so I haven't needed to. Been getting so much rain. And, oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Feels fantastic to be outside. This week, for this week's vlog, I'm mostly just gonna be focusing on doing some tidying. Just need to film a garden tour, so need to get that done. Mostly just stuff that got pushed aside because I spent most of my week last week cleaning up the storm damage and didn't have time to get on top of those things. And then uh, I have some more planting, obviously. There's always gonna be planting, it's a garden channel. So there's some more planting to get done. I don't have a ton. I know it looks like there's a lot over there, but not everything is for use here at this house. I have some projects I'm doing for some other people. So there's still some stuff over there, but really not that much, which is great. I'm happy about that. Oh, and look, look at that. Pot's all fixed up. Got that done. I It seems sturdy. It is holding some water in the bottom. Like, look, it's got a little bit of a wobble to it. See that, how it's got that going on? I may still want to come in here and fill in some of these cracks just to help stabilize it better. But otherwise, this might be as good as it's going to get. And I don't know if I'm gonna put that queen palm back in there. I would like to. I think that that would look nice, but Eh, it just seems risky. That's a lot of weight. This thing's heavy. I can't even lift this right now. So it's going to be sitting there for at least probably, I'd say maybe another two weeks. Something like that. Who knows? Maybe. I would appreciate having that symmetry there, but also if it falls over again, then it's going to break into even more pieces and I can't replace it. So I don't know. I'm going to think on that one for a while. I did scoot this back though because it was sitting right there on the edge and anytime we'd have a gust of wind it was just bloop, right into the water and it was going this way so it was landing in those steps and i just take it and scoot it over and you know i've talked about before if a palm tree falls over i leave it over if it's a really 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 windy stormy day but it was just the past few days it's just been gusty lots of gusty wind so i was popping it back up and then it actually fell this way and just barely was held on on the edge of the pool by its root ball. So I got really lucky there. It looked really pretty. I wanted to get and go swim with the palm tree, but I figured that wasn't a great idea. So now I have that scooted, scooted, scoot, scoot. What's the, moved it over here so it can't fall back in the water. And I'll think on that right now. It's not a priority. Just cause this is already potted up. It's had its refreshment with new soil and it's gotten its fertilizer and it's on the drip. So it's okay right here. It's, slightly more sheltered in this spot too, so it's not blown over as much. So I just don't think I need to focus on that right at this time. What I do need to focus on is just doing some more stuff with all the little plants over here. I, the reason that there's still plants over here is because I was transitioning. If you remember from like, I don't know, May, whenever I moved the plants outside, I was bringing them over here. Anything needed to be repotted, I'd repot it and then go put it where it goes. And what's left over here, I don't think most of it needs repotting. I'll go through it slowly and see, but for the most part, I think I'm through all of the repots over here. I have a little hibiscus down there that I could do a repot on. Hey, good boy, Toby. That water looks nice. Oh, it looks so nice. I want to get in there. I need to do a toad check too. There have been a pair of toads in here. There's been a lady toad swimming around with a, another toad strapped to its back for like the last three days. And the poor thing just, it looked so exhausted. Yesterday I came out and they were floating upside down and I was like, dude, get off of her. Take the hint, she doesn't want you. I try not to interfere with nature, but th at that point I went and scooped it up with the net and I set them over on the edge of the pool that she could get some air and take a breather. Cause you know, toads aren't great swimmers. I just went off in a whole different direction. Welcome to the vlog. Going to go through here, hopefully in just a moment for y'all, this will be looking more 
tidy over here. That's the goal anyways, that's what I'm gonna work on. There we go, things are looking a lot better over here. The glider situation, I know, it's not perfect. I went ahead and I scrubbed a couple of the cushions. Well, I scrubbed all of them. You can probably tell which one was more resistant to being cleaned. So I have to go in with a heavier detergent on that one because I couldn't get everything off of there. But otherwise, things are looking a lot better. Look, there's the ground over here again. Got the bistro set put together. It doesn't have cushions because I needed them for the table because the table has more chairs than the old ones, but that's okay. I can pick up some cushions another time. I have this succulent dish here that needs an update. Could use some work. The mix that it's in, I think that it's broken down quite a bit. It's holding on to a good amount of moisture. Got some new succulent potting soil over there and I think that I need to do something about this, right? That seems squishy. Probably a good idea to get that repotted and fixed up. I'll throw a whole bunch of other succulents in there with it. I mentioned in the garden tour that I wanted to start compiling all of my little things and put them into like just a few larger containers because I just I don't want little plants all over the place just little four inch pots it just it drives me nuts it feels cluttered and messy and you know you end up with situations like this where it's like okay that's cute that cactus isn't staying there that's just where it is right now it needed a spot where it wouldn't get blown over but all the like little things up on the wall and I have lots of little tiny succulents in these little pots I'd like to just get them all put together. As long as they're compatible, may as well do that. And I think that that would be a good thing. It's actually a few days later, just a few minutes ago, which was Monday for me, it's now Friday. Remember when I said, oh, it's gonna be nice for a couple of days, no rain. That was a lie. Like maybe 25 to 30 minutes after I said that, it started pouring. We got close to two inches of rain in just a couple of hours. And then it just kind of, misted and rained off and on for a few days. There was luckily enough of a gap on Tuesday that I was able to get out here and film the garden tour, but that was about itch. it. It, <laughs> it's about itch. That's not a word, but I still got a good amount of stuff done in that like, maybe maybe it was 45 minutes before it started raining. Got a, enough done to get the garden tour filmed and now things have dried out enough to start to get planting. It stopped raining yesterday afternoon and it, everything was just sopping wet. Like the ground was like a sponge you'd step on and just water would squirt out. And then it ended up raining a little bit more last night, which is actually fine because it was blowing in a front from Canada and it now feels glorious outside. Thank you, Canada. Dew point dropped down to, I think they said it's around 60 right now. So the humidity is pretty low and it just, oh, it feels amazing. Feels more like fall than summer. These are getting pretty out of control here. I'm okay with it though. One of y'all mentioned that you knew someone or had a family member that used to put rubber bands where you wanted them to stop growing. That's interesting. I'm gonna look into that. I, I figure I'll just prune them. But I'll look into that rubber band thing. That was interesting. So I guess the first thing I should do is go ahead and compile all my little succulents. So I'd like to get that done. And then those oh so easy roses that are down here, those need to get planted up too. those poor things. They've been waiting. Well, it's only been like two and a half weeks. I've been waiting that long, but I had to move them over into the shade when we had that heat spell. It's gonna get hot again. July is normally the hottest month of the year here. Even though it's only like 79 today, it's gonna get warm again. So they would be better off in the ground. And what a great time to plant, right? When it's nice and cool, the plants will appreciate that. It's always better to get things planted when the ground's nice and warm, preferably over 60 degrees. And it starts to get to be around 95 to 100 outside. Run more of a risk with planting things. Still do it oftentimes, this has to be done very, very, very early in the morning. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I'd rather get the roses planted up over here first because my sunscreen's still fresh. Only well, been on for half an hour, so it's something gonna be in the sun. It's a good time to do it. I know, odd logic, but that's just the way my brain works. I'm gonna be in the sun, may as well do it while the sunscreen's at its maximum potential. I mentioned in the garden tour, these bromeliads, they were just sitting here getting a little bit of sun. I don't think I'm going to keep them over here, at least definitely not right here because this, well, the roses need to go here. Just seemed like a good spot to get them acclimated to the sun. Is my mic on? I didn't check. There we go. That's good. Mic's on. And to make sure this is graded properly. That's been a project over here for the last few years is trying to get this whole area smoothed back out. I don't want the roses to end up being buried want the slopes to be smooth i was thinking probably from like right here 
Yeah, that's where I want to start, right in here. Maybe a little bit more this way because I remembered I have the dahlias right there. I want to dig up the dahlias. They just started growing. There we go. Look how loose and sandy the soil is. Has any of what I've been doing been on camera? I hope so. I'm going to say my hope or assumption with this area was that when I dig these holes, that's going to help fix some of the spots over here where things need to be smoothed out. And it looks like that's probably going to be the case. Uh, unfortunately, this is the only one that still has flowers on it. And those are fading out, but the oh so easy Italian ice roses, that's what these are, they're landscape roses. They start off with a yellow hue and then fade into this fun kind of light pink color. I'll be sure to show the tag on them. That is perfect, perfect level on that. Well, what do we think? It's, I need to do some explaining. So originally the plan with the roses was to have them start from right around here and then to have that carry on just behind this trunk right here and then that would come over and create a swoop that went over right here. But the problem is, see, the, I didn't, didn't plan properly. It's all right, this works, but I have an extra, that's all I was gonna say. Otherwise, this would come out to just a little bit more of a curve. Maybe I should go ahead and lift up these impatiens and then give that rose just a gentle scoot that way. And then next year, remember not to put dahlias right where this rose is supposed to go. Maybe, that, I think that'd be a good idea. What do y'all think? I should probably do that. That way it can still go through and have that swoop that goes over a little bit. My only issue with having the roses in this cup shape like they are right here is it creates a planting barrier. So no matter what, I'll always be restricted to making sure I have little things planted right in front of them. Whereas if it goes over, just moving this one just over a little bit to have that be more of a curve, like an S, then that, I don't know, I just feel like it frees things up and creates a better flow. So I should probably do that. I'll do that. I also had to space them just a smidge closer together then I probably should have. They're about 15 inches. They really should be spaced at least 18 inches apart. With landscape roses though, usually you can get away with having them closer together because they're not going to be as prone to powdery mildew and rot and those things. They should be pretty disease resistant. You always wanna make sure that spacing's proper though so that you can have the airflow in between them. But I did want these to not necessarily hedge up, but similar to a hedge. It's fine, it'll do for right now. Cause it's just that one. I put one dahlia, just one dahlia right there Maybe I could move it, but it, they're barely coming up. So I don't know, I don't want to do that. I could give it a couple weeks and let that Dahlia, that's a Cafe Alley, let that get bigger and more robust and not as fragile as it is right now. And then I could scoot that and then maybe, okay. Anyways, that's enough of all that. I also put a thing of Heliconias here just cause I have a lot of Heliconias and I wanted a swoop of them. Typically wouldn't want something taller in front of the other things, but that's a one year thing. They, these aren't perennial. I'll do my best to overwinter them. I'll dig them up and store the rhizomes and see what happens with them. But this is just kind of a living in the moment sort of thing. I was like, I have to have them over here. I think that that would be beautiful. I thought about maybe doing them right here, right in front of everything, but then I, that would create like a wall. I don't want to do that. I would prefer for things to have that flow. So you have to remember that there's going to be some pretty big dahlias over here. It's why I made sure to leave a decent sized gap here because they're dahlias that all get fairly large. Banana cannas against the fence. There's a random alocasia that overwintered. Don't know how that survived the colds when the gingers and the cannas didn't, but there it is shooting up out of the ground. Although there is one ginger that I noticed, just a teeny itty bitty ginger that's starting to pop up underneath this fern. So that's good. Didn't think any of them had survived. There's one left. And then those bromeliads that y'all saw in the right there, bromeliads, I have two of those. Those are fireballs. They can take a lot of sun. I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll use wire or some sort of string and get them onto the slope so it'll cover up this spot right here. It'll look like they're planted here, but they're not. That's the plan there. I'm gonna think on it 
just a little bit because I'm also torn about maybe getting some sun impatience in here. So basically I'm trying to decipher between flowers or foliage. I may try and do both. Try and squeeze the bromeliads right here and then just do a little patch of sun impatience right there and a patch over there. That could be fun. I don't know. Okay, so now I need to handle the succulent situation over here. I have a whole bunch of smaller succulents. Just lots of random ones that are in small pots and uh, I would like to get them grouped together just because in the fall and in the winter time when I have them inside, I just, it's such a pain watering obviously. And this, this needs to be repotted anyways, right? I mean, come on, that's overdue. Figure, move everything up into something that looks nicer, which you can't even see. I'll get it into frame. Let's see, you know, this Echeverias in the white. You know, with these Echeverias, when they start to do this, just little boom, like that, problem solved. I know that may have seemed harsh, but you just take this, stick that back into the soil, and it'll start growing. It's gonna be totally fine. I felt so lazy buying pre made succulent. They're not an easy open. How are you gonna charge $11 for something and not put an easy open on it? As I was saying, I feel so lazy buying a pre made succulent mix. It's typically, I just use an all purpose potting mix and I'll add some sand, some perlite to it, and maybe some tiny bits of gravel to have it drain more quickly, but sometimes it is nice to just have something laying around ready to use. Makes things go faster. I've never tried this one from Ferti Loam. I can tell you just from looking at it that I'm not crazy about it. It's pretty peaty, which I'm trying to get away from. That's another thing, a bad habit that I need to keep in mind trying to use things that are coconut based. Fortunately, in this instance, I forgot about that. It seems like something that's gonna stay wet for a while, but we will see. Most of what's going in here are plants that I don't, I don't think they're gonna be too fussy about that anyways. As long as they don't stay wet for too long, most of these aren't plants that are just going to like rot out instantly <laughs> if that happens. All right, look at, this is, yeah, see this? Look at how that's dripping. I figured, I was like, this doesn't feel right. It shouldn't be this spongy. So I'm glad getting this done. I, I was about to say, I bet a lot of that swell is just gonna fall right off of there. And it did, so that's good. This is an Aeonium. I don't know what kind, it's just came as an assorted one. It has all these aerial roots on it from the winter time. Things got very humid below it. I had it sitting on top of a humidity tray because that's how I was keeping all of the plants and that I think encouraged it to put those out. Sometimes if you go to them without watering them, they'll send those out. It's the last ditch effort to get some moisture. So that can be a cause too, but this got watered, I'd say plenty. No point was this like dried up and shriveled up when I had it inside in that grow space. I'm gonna continue on just as this was, keeping this in the center. I love this Aeonium. It's so cool. I could have done this as like a bonsai. That would have been neat. I don't need the sedum over here. That's going to disappear. I'll stick it right there for now. Do some filling in underneath it. Lightly pat that swell down. I'm actually wondering if I should even do some pruning on this. Maybe this branch right here would come off. I'm going to leave it for right now, but it's, it's, well, it's actually, it's kind of bothering me, but it can stay for right now. Tiny jade here that I didn't even realize was in that. It was in the original one, so I wouldn't put that over here, the problem is the jade's going to need room to grow. So that's why I think this branch and this branch are going to have to come off so that has space to grow. Then I have another jade right here. It's a tricolor jade. That's also going to need some room to grow. It'll be fine in here for a while, for, I mean, probably a couple of years, but for right now, my goal is just to get them all put together. Watch chain, which would be going right. Okay, you know what? It's gotta go, it is in the way. Had to take it off of there. Get that, it just opened up so much room for plants in there. And this is okay, Aeoniums, they propagate super easily. I can take this and just shove that back in the soil and any one of my containers that has a succulent mix in it, it'll start to grow. Ideally would use clippers for a cleaner cut, but it's fine. It's fine, everything's fine. Sansevieria, or Dracaena down in there. I think this is one of the Fernwood Mikados right there. I believe that's what it was. It wasn't labeled. Just what it looks like. I have several of these. I put them in a planter a few years ago. One that went 
around my um, umbrellas. Those have all done a good amount of growing. They're looking nice. This right here is a really cool agave whose tag is almost worn off. It's agave striata nana, 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 agave. Well, you can't see it. It's a teeny tiny little dwarf agave. It doesn't get very big at all. One that stays super tiny. And these aren't that common, at least they weren't back in the day when I got this. So I do want to make sure that that's not piled. I don't want anything growing in too closely around it is what I was going to say. Gotta make sure to give that one some room to breathe. Haworthia, I'm going to stick that over here in the corner near this Sansevieria because I just, I don't know, I feel like it looks okay there. Forgot about the little jade. I'm going to take that and stick it back here. It can grow with the other one. In that spot, this other branch is probably going to need to come off of here. But I'll leave it for right now because I already took one off of there and I took it up somewhat aggressively. So give the plant a break for right now. Echeveria, that's going to take up a lot of space in here. But the whole point was to get these all into one planter and I only have two plants left. So I think I'm going to put it in one of these corners. That might look pretty, perhaps. Right around here, that would look nice. And I can move this Hawarthia. Hawarthia. I think that's just going to go right there, right in the front. And then I have one more of these sedums. See, it needs to be repotted just because when it's in this small pot like this, it's, it gets banged around, gets moved all over the place. If I can get into something larger where it can just stay still, I think that'd be a lot better for it. Eventually, uh, Morganum like this, Morganium, that eventually, a burrow's tail is going to need essentially this entire container. For right now, probably for a year, maybe two, it'll be fine like this in the etch of area I can bump out into another planter. I actually don't even know if I like this in here. I feel like that doesn't, that doesn't have room. So maybe I should pull that out. As much as I would enjoy having all of them in here, if I just have like a couple that have to go into other planters, that would be okay. So you can see these are all folded up like this over time. I'm be able to get those to relax. They can come over here and come over the front. I could just pluck them and stick them in the soil. They'll grow that way too. I don't want to tear it up too much just because I'm just now repotting it. So I want to take it somewhat easy on the plant. All right, cool. So there's that. I wasn't going for like an artistic masterpiece here. All right, just was trying to get things compiled together. And then I still have two small areas and then this piece of that Aeonium. So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, and you know what? I have another one of these tricolor jades too. So I'll go ahead and grab another container and see what we can do with those. I'll be right back. I don't know why I said be right back I'm filming a video. That's what editing's for. Here's that tricolor jade. And this Aeonium's not gonna work in there. I'm not really sure what I was thinking of there. I might just plop this into its own container and have this around as a plant to give away to someone, a friend or someone who wants some house plants. I don't need it. I have plenty of succulents. There you go. Take that Echeveria. I'm just going to plop it down in there gently. Which I know gently and plop probably aren't synonymous. And drop this one over here. Oh, and I have this tiny bit of tricolor sedum here. May as well throw that in the mix too. That'll fill in nicely. It's not going to look great for a while, but for right now it looks okay. I was going to just put that in this pot, but I think I should probably use a different one. All right, and then as for this piece of Aeonium here, I'm going to clean some of this stuff off, just honestly because it's bugging me. It's not going to hurt the plant. It's okay. Take that off right there. You have two pieces grown in this pot, just like that. I could use a rooting hormone. It's really not necessary with these though, and that should do it. These will be just fine, just like this. I think that that looks nicer. Like I said, it's not like a work of art or anything like that. Some of these are going to need to fill in, but it's better. It's better than just having all these plants individually potted in those tiny little pots. They get blown over really easily. If you try and water them, just the movement from the water, whether it's from a hose or a watering can, that knocks them over. This is an improvement for sure. And I love this seashell. I think that's really pretty. I'm going to like having this inside during the fall and winter in the grow space. Even it's probably where that'll be. Hopefully there'll be enough space for the grow lights. There should be, should be more than enough space for those grow lights. Oh, I left my lens cap on the table. Now it's covered in dirt. I didn't realize that I didn't center that, the sedum that probably should have gone more like right here, but it's okay. It's going to come over and fill out all of these 
edges. It's okay, just needs time. That's how these things go. Just need some patience, that's all. I gonna say, this got my inner succulent themed starting to turn and now I really want to do succulent planters. I know I just kind of did succulent planters, but I mean ones where like I have fresh succulents and pack them all together and then people yell at me for putting too many things in one pot. Those are always the prettiest ones. All right, last but not least, this is in my way. Get out of my way chair. It's finally time to plant up the bowl. Ultimately, I have a bunch of boulders and things move around and some more grading to do over here. I still have the rib situation and you know that big situation with my shoulder from last year. So the boulders may stay put for right now. I don't know, they're lava stone. They're not very heavy. I at least need to get that leveled out. I'm gonna go grab all the annuals and things I wanna put in there. I'm probably gonna need some more soil too. I filled this up a couple months ago and then I realized I need to hold off because I had to do some things. It's a big long story. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna go get some plants. So I already have the centerpiece plant in there. Bull, I had it leveled out and the ground just smushed out from underneath it. What I was getting ready to say was the next layer, probably won't be any surprise to anybody because it's Heliconias. Hey, hummingbird. You can't see if there's a hummingbird like right above my head. You want some? Okay, doesn't want any. That has nice healthy roots there on these Heliconias. I'm only going to do three because they will spread and fill out to figure one here, probably one here and one over, like, you know, you get it in thirds. Right now, these are all going to blend together pretty simply, but once the heliconia start to flower and the rolia starts to flower, that will look a lot nicer together. And then for the outside perimeter, lemon coral sedum. Have a whole bunch of lemon coral sedum. It's an interesting plant. There are a lot of perennial type sedums. This is perennial zone seven and up. I'm 6B. Sometimes little bits of it will survive through the winter, but nothing significant. But what I've noticed that's really great about the lemon coral sedum is that it can really take a great amount of moisture and even pretty rich soils for being a sedum. In fact, I had all of these sitting. If you remember, I had a bunch of petunias that basically rotted out because it turned out there was a crack and a sprinkler line that was sitting right below them. So they just got absolutely saturated and rotted. And these lemon coral sedums are right next to them. They did fine. Not saying that that's ideal for them, but I'm surprised with how well they did. And I've wanted to do lemon coral sedum in this container for a long time. This bowl has this weathered look to it, sort of a patina. And the lemon coral sedum just has this great lush full texture it'll come over the edge but not so much that's going to completely hide this bowl which is great that's one of the problems with trailers is sometimes you have a really pretty container and then you end up not even really being able to see it because your trailers cover it up this is going to provide a similar aesthetic that like a moss would provide to something like this to go and that's it that's done. I lift their tags out, don't need those. Sometimes I hold on to them so I can reference back to them for videos, but I'm not going to forget what a lemon coral sedum is. I do think I need to grab some soil though and top dress this in some spots. Okay, and now, look at that. Look at how loose my tripod is. And really wonky, flopping all over the place. I never made my point with lemon coral sedum. Pretty much everything I have in this container are plants that are moisture lovers. The heliconia love moisture, the roya love moisture. So you wouldn't necessarily think sedum would be the best thing to pair up with them, but I'm pretty confident that the lemon coral sedum will be able to handle that irrigation, especially because I use a mix that's going to drain pretty sharply, but I'm still going to be a lot. So I'll keep an eye on it, but like I said, I really don't think it's going to be a problem. The so really is you can grow those in ponds and bogs. Doesn't mean they have to be grown that way. The heliconias, same thing-ish, not quite as boggy but they certainly don't like to dry out for a long time. But again, shallow container, pretty good drainage, so I don't see that being an issue. Now, what I need to do is, I need to straighten these rocks out. These rocks are a mess. Better? No, that's not enough. Look at, I love the moss on this one. I think that that's so stunning. Something just lush and magical and happy about a stone with moss on it. I'm not going for perfection. I just wanted to get them out of the way. That I'll have to do for right now. I think that's plenty. Looks good to me. I really do like that lemon coral sedum with this container. It shouldn't cover it up so much that the cane, yeah. 
It shouldn't cover it up so much that the containers are not visible. It will grow a lot, but it'll be easy to keep trimmed. Should stay pretty tight. I'm not going to say compact, but its growth should stay tight together because this spot gets a good amount of light. So that should prevent it from getting too spindly and overgrown. And then in the center, with those heliconias, there will be a whole bunch of orange flowers with a nice light purple. That's what the Royal will have. It'll have a nice light purple color to it. My initial plan with this was to do essentially what I did right here. Wasn't positive I was going to be able to find heliconias, so that just worked out really well. Found lots of heliconias this year. It's a magical year for heliconias. But I want to do basically this, at least with the lemon coral sedum, and then just maybe one or two very simple plants in the middle. And then I wanted to fill in the area around it with some sort of purple petunia. Probably the Bordeaux, because it's going to be one of the ones that's more tough. This area does get a good amount of moisture, so I have to be aware of that, right? A lot of petunias will just rot if they have constant water overhead, but I don't think the Bordeaux would have any issues with that. It's not constant water overhead, but I know the purple waves I tried in here, and they wouldn't have done well with that. I've tried them in a similar situation last year, and they... They didn't do well. If I can come across any super tunia bordeaux, I want to get those planted right along the base of the container down there so that it almost will look like this whole thing sort of floating on a puddle of purple flowers. Basically just trying to recreate a fake like water bowl situation here, which would be more apparent if I actually had the purple petunias. Wouldn't that look neat though? Just having that little pop of color right underneath the planter with the pretty chartreuse green coming over the sides and that bluish patina which you can barely see right now how the pocket so dirty now i'll give it a rinse in a minute when i get the hose out i will be watering this in i've had someone ask me uh why i don't water my plants in after i plant them and i do i always do i just don't always do it on camera because i don't always want the water right next to the camera usually i film and then stop recording and then go through and water everything in or i'll water everything in and then come back and finish up whatever I was doing but it is getting late so I'm gonna go ahead get that watered in and tidied up and I can see it's not quite level so I need to work on that a little bit more but overall I'm happy with it. I'll be even happier when I go ahead and get these poles put back into the garage this area is going to fill out and look really nice and colorful here in a few weeks still has a ways to go so a lot of stuff that's just now waking up but once those get going and have some pretty crepe myrtles on each side and then pretty foliage from the banana cannas in the back maybe some dahlias I don't know, they're not showing any action yet, but hopefully those will come up and then lots of color from all these gingers that are in here. That's why I didn't want this to be too loud and extreme because there's going to be a lot going on behind it and I want it to look sort of like a faux water situation. And I think it does, it, especially well if I can get something blue or purple planted around it. I was thinking about Evolvus, Evolvulus, but I, this spot's way too wet for that stuff. I just spent about 15 minutes talking to the camera while I cleaned all of this old foliage. Off of the parlor pop, and wouldn't you know? Camera overheated. That's unfortunate. Just lost 15 minutes of video there. I mean, I was just rambling on about, you know, plant stuff. Wasn't a big deal. But still have a look at this one. Look at how much this is done growing. How much this is done growing. Look at how much growing this one has done. <laughs> you know, it's the weirdest thing. You put a microphone on, you talk to a camera, and suddenly it's speaking is just, it's like some sort of, exactly, right there. Talking gets hard sometimes when you're multitasking and you have a microphone on. So this is a parlor palm. I've had it for a very long time and it's starting to get lots of little trunks in it. Isn't that cute? I love when they start to do that. It takes them a long time, generally at least three to five years in my experience until you start to get the little rings on those trunks. These don't get very big, just, you know, maybe three to five feet tall at the absolute maximum. The biggest one I've ever seen was probably about three feet tall from the base to the top of the fronds, but I'm sure there are people who have grown them larger than that when they become older specimens. Now, they're not the fastest growers, so it's exciting when they start to get that maturity and you get all those little rings in there and they just look like tiny little palm, well, they are tiny little palm trees, like bonsai palms. I took one and I put it in my bonsai pot. Isn't that cute? It's just a little offshoot. It's nothing special, but this particular container is really hard to keep plants in, so Figured I'd just throw one of the pieces that snapped out while I was pulling some of the old fronds out. I'd take that and stick it in here, just for right now. I actually think I'm gonna put a miniature tree begonia in this at some point. For now, this works, and I think it's stinking adorable. Okay, I think that's it, because the, well, the sun's going down, the video comes out tomorrow. Rained all week. 
is the, that's just the way things grow sometimes. It's okay. The rain is good. Plants are looking good. Plants are healthy. They love the rain. All that stuff. I forgot that in the garden tour I said I'd get a better shot of the mimosa. But it's already going to sleep. Yeah, I'm sure you see it in the background of the videos all the time though. Happy with this. I'm especially going to be happy with it in a few weeks when it starts to fill out more. When I get it level. That'll look a lot better. Oh, and if I can't find any of the Super Junior Bordeaux, then what I might do is there's a blue fire glass that you put in, like, guest fire pits. I might just put a ring of that around the bottom. I think the Petunia would be better, just as far as the artistic nature of it. I don't, I just don't want to incorporate shattered glass into the garden. But if I have to, I will. And there are some, there are varieties of that fire glass you can get that are smoothed out. And either way, I think it'll be beautiful. So just have to wait and see what happens there. And I'm loving this whole area. I'm gonna love it even more in a week or so when I get some mulch on top of it. And I did decide that I am going to move this, uh, this oh so easy Italian ice rose. I'm gonna just take it and scoot it over there where this patch of impatience are, and then I'll move those impatience right there. I think having the swoop go like this just would look better than having it come around and do that. Right? You agree? And like I said, it's going to look so much better when there's mulch on there. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I just forgot I was going to prune the banana trees. It's okay. I can do that tomorrow. It's not a big deal. The yard waste just got picked up this morning from like a week and a half ago. They, they were so backed up from all the storm damage in the area that it took them a long time to come and get it. So it would have just been a pile of leaves laying here on the ground for another week. So I have until Wednesday night next week to get that done. Oh, and happy fourth. Hope everybody enjoys their holiday weekend. Hope you're staying cool. Especially all y'all in the areas who don't typically have air conditioning. Been seeing the heat up there in the Pacific Northwest and in the East Coast. Really scary. We had that heat dome here for a while, but didn't get as hot. And uh, like sometimes it gets that hot here. It's not unheard of. People in this area have air conditioning for the most part. And we have lots of cooling centers. Uh, we're just more equipped to handle it. So I would imagine that was probably pretty horrible for everybody living in the areas where you don't have AC and maybe you don't have the resources around your town or city to help people cool off who are overheating. But yeah, everybody's staying safe, staying cool. Life's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Still got a little bit of repotting left to do. Well, a whole bunch of repotting. But I don't have as many annuals left that need to go into the ground. In fact, I only have a very small amount that are meant for this yard here and the rest are going elsewhere. Maybe I'll take the camera along when I plant up the other yards. Just let me know. Is that something you'd want to see? That's it. Comment down below. Oh, fresh flower on the hibiscus. Love it. Seminal pink. It's a very simple hibiscus, but it's one of my favorites. Just a big bubblegum pink flower. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna go. Okay, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.